As Torah is told, and has been told for many years, of an emperor, sometimes a king, today it can be a president, of an emperor who got the best tailors in his empire to make a suit for him. Finally, he got one. But to cut the long story short, like they say, he was made to walk naked. And all the people around the king or the emperor admired the suit. Oh, what a wonderful suit you have, Mr. Empire. Emperor. Wonderful. You've never had another one like this before. Nobody in the world has such a wonderful suit. And yet the king was naked. It took an innocent child to point out to the king that indeed he was naked. Today, this morning, I want to be that innocent child to point at the leadership of this country and tell them you are naked. That the people around the leadership of this country are not telling the leadership the truth. This country is hurting. That the citizens of this country are going through pain that can be mitigated and avoided. But because we are blind to what is going on in this country, we continue to dig the hole. Today, I'm that innocent child reminding the king that the tailors around you are not telling you the truth. That the economy is doing so bad that half of the people in your kingdom are going to bed hungry. That an overwhelming number of parents in this country are not able to see their children through school. That a frightening majority of young people in this country have no jobs. That an impossible number of Kenyans live below the famous World Bank one dollar per day. That if you are to visit the villages in this country, you could be admitted to hospital. hospital. You would be sick. The suffering, the pain, the state of hopelessness in this country. And yet the tailors around the king continue to tell you that the economy is doing well. They continue to tell you you can borrow up to 9 trillion and 15 trillion. They continue to tell you that it's okay to get this money and squander it, squander it, misuse it. All the institutions of governance are headed by people who are naked, and nobody's telling them they are naked. Parliament is naked. There's nobody to tell Parliament is naked. It is surprising that in this state we are in, with the suffering and pain that Kenyans are going through, at any one time in this country, there will be dozens of members of parliament roaming the world, benchmarking, squandering taxpayers' money. The tailors around the leadership of this country are not even informing the president, for example, that the new tax that is coming into effect this January, the so-called patriotism tax, that you are going to get money from people who are already collapsing small traders multiplying their pain. What is worse is that the tailors do not tell you the pain the people go through, not just by paying those taxes from businesses that are not even doing well, but from the knowledge that the moment they pay this money, it's going to be eaten by people. That people are going to buy the latest Mercedes-Benz. Discovery, the latest Range Rover, they are going to drive V8 with this money. They are going to construct more buildings and buy property in Dubai. The tailors are not telling us the truth. The tailors will ought to tell we Kenyans the truth, that we are naked. The tailors can't even tell us the education sector is collapsing. This animal called CBC, where has it worked? What kind of children are we producing? The tailors will not tell us the truth, that the 100% transition is, is a joke. 
transition to nothingness, to emptiness, transition through a system that produces graduates who can't even construct a sentence in English, can't write a letter, have no analytical skills, have nothing. Graduates, employers are looking at and wondering, why would I hire such a man and pay him so much? Why can't I hire a semi-literate person? Transition to where? The interpreters are not telling us that we are collapsing our education. From the time the lecturers went to, on strike in 1993, and more so in 2003, when Kibaki had just come to power, and they realized that nobody cares about them. We set ourselves on a path of destroying university education. When teachers go on strike and we force them back to the classroom, we do not know that leaves a serious lasting impact. Because then they say, OK, since nobody cares, let me get the little they give me, but I do my own business. The interpreters, as Wale Shoinga calls them, the tailors, as they appear in this story, are not telling us the correct thing. The interpreters, the tailors, are not telling us that our health system is collapsed and the so-called UHC is a joke, that NHIF is a facility to perpetuate fraud, that nothing pains Kenyans today more than having a sick person in the compound, in the family that you'll have to sell land, sell everything you have to take people to hospital. With the rise in cancer, TB, malaria, malaria, HIV and these opportunistic diseases, Kenyans are left at the mercy of God. And yet the tailors, the interpreters, are not telling us the truth. They are not telling us that it is possible for us, with our resources in this country, to come up with a functional public health care system. Instead, like everything else, they turn health into an enterprise to make money. The interpreters are not even telling us that we need to play our politics well, that even a good thing like BBI, that should help us re-engineer our politics, which we must, a good thing like BBI, being a product of a good thing like the handshake, the interpreters, the tailors are not telling us that we are not even doing it well. Yesterday in Ikisi, Wapende was spending. The train has left the station. Which train? BBI belongs to Kenyans to help Kenyans fix their problem. It cannot be used to divide Kenyans. There's no sta station. The train is leaving. BBI is in Kenya. It's not, a, it's not a station. It's not going anywhere. It's for us. I, I feel pain to say these things because we love this country. We love this country. We must make sure that the tailors, the interpreters, tell us the truth as a people and as leadership. Look, even in the counties, the tailors are not telling the governors they are squandering money in this country. Look at the shenanigans in Nairobi. The tailors, the interpreters, the advisors around Sonko are not even telling the right thing to do. I suspect that if Sonko, for example, had gone to court, asked the court for a small window to allow, them, to allow him, despite the restrictions of the bail term, to allow him to appoint a deputy governor, I, 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 I am convinced the court would have given him that leeway. And then he would have walked to State House and talked to the president and told them, now I have this opportunity to appoint a deputy governor as we deal with this thing, please give me a name. Let's share. Is it, De is it Dennis Waweru? Is it Agnes? Who is it? Let's get someone. Among those names that had been flouted, floated around is a question of the interpreters around leadership. It's a question of the tailors and the suit they make. The tailors are not making the right suit for the judiciary. The judiciary is moving around naked. They can help us sort out corruption in this country, sort out corruption in this country. But guys are getting scot-free, getting out with all the theft around, with all the adjournments in court. It is the easiest thing to do in this country is to steal. Because there are no sanctions. It's not painful. It's beautiful. Obama told us at some point, and don't think Kenyans are stupid. When they see you driving around with big vehicles, 
They know you have stolen their money. And therefore, this morning, I beseech us as Kenyans, especially those of us who have the role of interpreters and tailors, to make an actual suit for our leadership. To help save this country from imminent collapse by telling the leadership the truth. Whatever you are, whatever that leadership, whatever small position you occupy, tell the men or woman ahead in charge of your section that this country is in his hands, that this country is in her hands. Whoever that leader is, at whatever level, let us be Kenyans who can point out things to our leaders and tell them we will be helping them. When you see something bad, point out. Because an interpreter has a role. A tailor has a role of making a good suit. I am hoping that in 2020, Kenyans who have an opportunity to advise government will do so with a clean heart, genuinely, from the love they have of this country. If they don't, I advise them to get to love this country. Finally, I must also address myself to the thieves, to people who make money in this country. You make money at the, ex at the expense of the common man. You steal money meant for health, for pregnant mothers. You steal money meant for education. I only have one advice to you. Please, be moderate in your theft. Look around in the past 10 or so years. Look at the billionaires who have died. Look at the people fighting over their wealth. A sad story is appearing in the media in this week of Njenga Karume's 40 billion empire crumbling, of the sad state of a granddaughter to Karume, perhaps true or not, dying because they could not have accessed these billions. So even as you steal from us the billions, Ask yourself, just how much money does somebody need? What will you do with these billions? Look around, those who have died in the past five years. Apart from being forgotten, like it's written in the holy book, their world is going to the moth. Don't steal money you not even need and yet subject Kenyans to pain. Have a good day.